Another benefit is being able to machine as you build is you're able to keep those real tight tolerances. We're gonna talk additive and subtractive machining on the same machines that's behind us right now. And I am ready to learn just like yourself, Mark. Let's talk about the concept. Well, a lot of us know additive manufacturing. We know we're creating some sort of mold or gel or creation that's building on top of itself. We understand that we're saving material waste by not taking a block of material and reducing it down. We understand that it keeps some of our other machines and uh, keep the spindle up and running while we're doing some additive manufacturing here. But what are some of the major benefits when we start combining these two operations? So I think one of the biggest benefits is, like you said before, a lot of unmanned machining hours here. You know, you're able to program, you know, start the part, get it going, and you're able to build. And at the same point, you're actually able to machine as you build. So a benefit there is time, cost, of course. Um, but of course, another big benefit that we see is the benefit of conformal cooling. You know, we're able to sit there and, and actually build that conformal cooling, design that into each part per the geometry of the part. Really get into those nooks and crannies to help you re reduce your, your cycle time, which in effect means less money, less time. You said nooks and crannies, which leads me to the other aspect that I'd like to discuss of precision. I mean, when we talk about your EDM, precision's there. When we talk about your three axis building machines, precision is there. Same concept here too, isn't it? Very much the same concept. So another benefit is being able to machine as you build is you're able to keep those real tight tolerances. You know, you have those real small tight radiuses in those real low areas. You're able to machine that as that part grows and you're able to constantly do that as that part gets higher and higher up until it's fully built. That sounds like it'd be a way more precise to do it, way to do it, right? It's a, it, it just from my common sense side of things, I'm going, well, Mark, that, yeah. Why wouldn't we always kind of do something like that, right? So is this all materials? Are there limitations on the materials? Where, where can I really dive in? If I'm looking at Sodic, I'm going, okay, additive and subtractive. I'm making these really creative, twisty parts for aerospace or medical, and I have to go this route. Where can we talk about where, okay, this material is gonna be best, focus on this, call Sodic, we need your help, you need our help, that kind of a thing. Um, right now, a lot of our most popular materials are going to be some of the tool steels, you know, like you're looking at P20s and that, a lot of molding steels. Also, uh, you know, 420 stainless. That's been very, very popular here in the, in the recent coming months and actually the recent year. Um, but there are a lot of materials that are still available. Um, you know, cobalt chrome, you know, uh, there's going to be a lot of more tool steels like an H13, A2, those type that are more predominant in, in shops like that so people can relate to them. But then also, you know, the big ones, titaniums, aluminums, things of that sort. So those are all materials that are, you know, here going to be coming up in the, in the near future. And Mark, when I talk about machines, and I'm trying to educate this, this audience that wants to learn more all the time about the technology that's constantly advancing and everything, I typically go through, okay, what are the benefits of the machine which we have done? What are the unique benefits that allow us to do something we weren't able to do before? Okay, great. What are some of the limitations? Okay, the materials, here's what we got. Mm -hmm. And then I always ask and I get to the point of, well, what industries can we focus on the most, right? Is it just anyone who's creative? And I have to ask that question because I go around machine shops now, and it seems like for every 10 machines or so, there's some sort of additive or additive and subtractive machine that partners along with the machine shop. It's not taking jobs from it. They're working together in a cohesive environment to create something new. And I think, I think that the biggest benefit there is, is where, yes, essentially, you know, this could be a two-in-one, three-in-one type of machine where you're able to do the brunt of the work here, and then maybe you need to go and do a secondary operation with, let's say, a sinker and EDM to really, to really fine-tune that certain area that you're looking for that's very critical. That's where you're going to see, you know, benefits also, you know, where, let's say you have a first shift, this machine's running, that, that was eight hours overnight, you come in, you get a finished part, you do some secondary ops, and you're, and you're done, you're left with the finished part. I've got to learn so much today. It's such a cool concept watching the evolution of engineering and manufacturing as a whole from manual stuff. And we always talk about from tape to floppy drive to computers and all the software and cutting tools and everything in between. This is the next evolution of what we have going on with additive and subtractive machining all in one. Mark, thank you so much for sharing this with me and the MTD audience. You're going to be famous starting now. <laughs>